you know, here's here's a story that is still still remarkable to me. When I went into training camp my first year, um, I went in to a locker room one day early, and there was a fellow sitting there. His name was Maury Kono, K-O-N-O, and he was the uh, equipment manager for the Browns, and he'd been that for probably since 1948. He was on the tail end of his career. And we were talking about something, and he said, oh, yeah, that's back when I invented the face mask. Hmm. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said he told a story about how Otto Graham got hurt during the game and during halftime. Uh, Paul Brown came, came to him and said, Maury, could you put something over the front of this helmet to, to keep uh, Otto's jaw intact? So, Well, there were a he, lot of flat noses in those days. They were. And actually, I talked to some of those those guys, and they're, they're fun to talk to. And they, they came to some of the games, and you talked to them about no, you know, playing with no face mask and talking to a couple of them, they said that the way, and they both played, or they all played both ways. They played offense and defense. And they said during the end of the game, it was always um, a question of the score it depended on their style of tackle. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, when you stick your nose in there and tackle, it, you, you can bust your nose or your lips. And if we were ahead, we would turn our head because... We didn't want to do that because we wanted to go out and kiss our girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so amazing. As you look back on uh, on the back, the the halfbacks or the fullbacks or uh, whatever they were designated during your era from uh, seventy through eighty one, basically, who were the backs that really impressed you? Uh, well, one was O.J. Simpson, although uh, we didn't play Buffalo that much, but. Uh, I can remember I played in a Pro Bowl with him. He was on our team, and there's a couple of us standing on the sidelines, and he made a cut, and it looked like, you know, one of those deals where they wind up the film faster than, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the old, like the old movies. So he was one. Um, uh, we didn't play the Chicago Bears very much, but when we did, Walter Payton was just unbelievable. Yeah. He'd be over to your right, and then all at once he'd be way over to your left, and then 30 yards downfield. Like how can he do that? Um, I'm trying to think of other guys we played. You know, Zonka was good. Uh, Franco Harris was good, although he wasn't really punishing for the Steelers. He would just kind of stick his nose up in the middle of the line, mm-hmm. and then if it was clogged up, he would edge out to the perimeter. And he had a great feel for making yardage. So those were. Those were some of the good ones. Yeah, that's great. Jerry Shirk is my guest 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. And when we come back, we want to talk about what Jerry is doing these days, what life is like, and uh, maybe comparing players of his era to this era as far as size goes. I notice a great difference, and I'd like to find out why. We'll be back in just a moment here on AM 1270 KJO. And back we go to our guest on our Tuesday talk show, Jerry Shirk. Grants Pass High graduate, 1966, and of course, all pro with the Cleveland Browns for 12 years from a defensive tackle position, wearing number 72. I'm playing for the Browns his entire career. Jerry, in this day and age, we don't often think of a player staying with the same franchise for an entire career. Did it happen more during your era? Uh, Carl, it really did, and I guess the biggest part was because of uh, you know later free agency came around came along where people could actually move from team to team. In my day, we wanted to move just you know, to get a better salary and sometimes to get a fresh start, but we really couldn't because the, the rules of the game and the contracts were a lot different back then. So uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't unusual for somebody to stay their entire career with one team. That's remarkable. Let me ask you, too, Jerry, about uh, today's players. And going back to your era, what was your height and weight uh, during your playing days? I was almost 6'5", and I played a lean and mean game. I was uh, I played right at 245, especially when I was playing well. And I actually went in uh, my first year, and I was a bit heavier. I was 255. And I thought I just had to be a brute and knock heads. And after a year of that, I realized that if I try to knock heads for five or ten years, uh, my head is not going to be in very good shape when when it's all over. Plus, I saw that I could uh, figure out ways of going around people. So I got a bit lighter and, and worked on some moves to 
instead of going through people, going around them, and it was a lot better for me. Has the philosophy changed in the league in these days? Because, you know, I mean, you're routinely seeing these 300-pounders, 275, three and a quarter, uh, especially in the O-line. But uh, what what's going on with uh, physique these days compared to uh, back in your playing days? Well, it actually, Carl, it actually started to change when I was a player towards the end of my career. And it had a lot to do with the rule changes for offensive linemen. What happened was when I first came in the league, uh, linemen could not use their hands very much. In fact, it's almost like the old high school where you had to clench your fist and, and hold it into your own body. And they, they wanted to put more octane in the offenses, so they, they started letting the, the linemen open their palms, and then they you know, gradually let them extend their hands uh, with you know, their arms with open palms. So you could do anything to a defensive player except hook him when they were going around you, you know, after they beat you. But you can actually, you could actually you still can't today grab somebody by the jersey and hold them you know, right in front of you. So what the offensive coaches realized was that the guys didn't have to be as athletic, but they had to be big and strong. And so they, the offensive lineman went from about, 260 to 300, 310, and 320. And then the defensive guys, they were, you know, athletic and a bit smaller, and then they realized they can't, they couldn't get through these guys. Right. They were just grasping them, so they went up to 300 and 310. And so now you have kind of, uh, although, you know, the guys are still relatively athletic, they're kind of like bulldozers going at each other, uh, versus in my day we were more or less like a bull and a matador. Interesting. Wow, what a that's an interesting observation. It makes perfect sense. It's just uh, so visible. I mean, you can see it today and see the great difference. And I, I think the the example of uh, opposing uh, bulldozers that that is so true. It is. It is, and it's uh, it's not to me. It's uh, of course the old days are always better to an old guy, right? Sure. It's not it's not as interesting to watch the lineman because the lineman used to. On the defense, you really did have some matadors and people that were doing all kinds of moves, and now they do moves, but they're more minimal. They just kind of dip their shoulder and try to plow through somebody. Yeah, yeah, you can see the difference. 